What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be looking at job title alternatives for data analysts. Now you may have noticed my red nose and that's because about two hours ago, I was playing with my youngest daughter. I bumped my nose into her head and it's still red even like two hours later. So, you know, I just decided to record anyways. I hope you can get over that with me. Now, what we're about to talk about is actually really, really important. And I get asked this all the time. And it's usually from people who are trying to get that first job as a data analyst. And so they're applying to these entry level data analyst positions and they get discouraged because they're not hearing anything back. And it's usually because there's three or 400 other people applying for that job. And so they're looking for alternatives to hopefully have a better chance of landing that first job. So looking at some of these alternate job titles is actually really smart and something I highly recommend because a lot of these positions are going to be really similar in terms of skill and the actual work that you're going to be doing to a data analyst position. And then you can put it on your resume and it will make it a lot easier to get a data analyst job in the future. Now, before we jump onto my screen, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that is Coursera. Coursera is a fantastic platform to learn all the data analyst skills that you will ever need. So if you want to become a data analyst, I highly recommend checking out Coursera. I've been using them for about five years, and so I can definitely vouch that it is a great platform to learn all of those skills. Thank you again to Coursera for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's jump on my screen and look at these alternate job titles. All right, so we are here on my Not Alex the Analyst account uh, who works at McDonald's. Uh, honestly, I'd love to work uh, for McDonald's as a data analyst. I'm sure that'd be a great position. Now, uh, we are here to look at job title alternatives, right? So we have our data analyst, uh, and let's go right over here to jobs because that's where we're going to be looking. Um, so we're going to take a look at data analysts. Now, when you think a data analyst, uh, there's just an insane amount of variety that you can get with the job title data analyst, and it varies so widely. But uh, there are a lot of things that you're going to find in, all, in most of these. You're going to need SQL, uh, decision making, Power BI, things like this, like just looking at some random skill store. I have no idea who this is. Um, these are some of the things that you're going to be looking for, right? Um, usually Excel, Tableau, Power BI, Python, SQL, th those types of skills are the ones that you're going to find in a lot or, or at least of the majority of data analyst titles. So the job titles that we're going to be looking at today won't have this exact skill set, but it will be similar. And I'm going to kind of talk about the differences and how it relates to, uh, you know, using that experience to becoming a data analyst. Now, the first one is one that you've probably heard quite a bit. I've done a comparison on it myself in the past, uh, and that's going to be, oops, and that's going to be, oh, here we go, a business analyst. Now, when you think of a business analyst, um, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, they're really, really similar, and they kind of are. The biggest difference to me, and this is something that I've seen kind of across the board in most positions is it's usually not as technical. They're usually not using a ton of Python. They're not using a lot of cloud platforms. The business analyst is usually working with the stakeholders to help understand their business needs. And the business analyst does have to understand how things work in SQL and Excel um, and possibly like Tableau or Power BI maybe. Um, and then they bring that back to the team, to the data analysts and to the um, you know database engineers and, and, and developers. And that's kind of what this role is. So I was clicking around for just a second. I found this business analyst for Amazon. Uh, some of the other ones I found weren't uh, great examples, but this one's a pretty good example. So this is a business analyst at Amazon. Uh, it's in Dallas on site. And if we come down right here, you know what they're looking for is someone who has a few years of experience as a business analyst, data analyst, statistical analyst. Um, Again, some of these alternative roles that we're looking at today. And so they're looking for someone who has SQL and Excel and has some domain knowledge. Um, and then up here in the responsibilities, which is you know really good, it's somebody who's supporting the cross-functional teams on the day-to-day -day execution of existing program implementation. And then this one right here is really good. It says design and develop automated reporting solutions to enable stakeholders to manage the business and make effective decisions. And you know, again, a lot of this could be very much interpreted as what a data analyst does. And so there's a ton of crossover in these positions. And so this is probably the first one that I would be looking at. But again, it's really popular. So you may get a lot of competition just like you do for a data analyst position. But again, we are just looking at different alternatives to a data analyst. And this is one that I think is really, really close and really similar to what a data analyst does, but may just be a little less technical. Now, let's go up here. The next one that we're going to be looking at is a data visualization uh, and it could be a data visualization analyst, 
um, visualization specialist. This is the one that I was looking for. You may find a data visualization analyst. Hey, maybe that's the sixth one, but this is the one that I was looking for. The data visualization specialist typically um, is really experienced on the front end of things. A data analyst usually needs to have both the back end and the front end. So usually the ETL process, helping get the data in, creating the rules, data dictionaries, um, you know, all that stuff, and then being able to visualize it. A data visualization specialist is most likely going to be working on the front end of things, whereas a data analyst can be working on the back end and the front end. When I say back end, I more mean the ETL process of things and doing exploratory data analysis in SQL or Python or any other tool. Whereas a data visualization specialist is most likely just going to be creating the visualizations, but it's really good experience because data analysts do need to create visualizations. And so if you can get that experience with this it is a really, really great um, stepping stone to kind of become a data analyst. So let's just look at some random ones. Let me see if I can find one really quick. So just a few jobs down, I found this one. And again, I'm just finding these on the fly. I'm not really researching these beforehand. Maybe I should have, but um, I found this one is a really good example of what a data visualization specialist uh, does. It says you'll be responsible for the design, development, and compelling data visualizations via a variety of techniques, including data storytelling, uh, gestalt interfaces, I don't know what that is, and user-centric design, and building tailored visualizations and dashboards. So that is what you are going to be doing. You'll work with a lot of um, you know, stakeholders to understand their business needs, a lot of different analysts to understand what they want and how they want things uh, to be visualized, and you'll build it. I, and right down here, it says the, they want experience in one of these tools, so one of these business intelligence tools. Tableau, Power BI, Click, Spotfire, QuickSight, Data Studio, MicroStrategy, and Looker. I, I know most of those. I never heard of uh, Spotfire, to be honest, but you know, that's what a data visualization specialist does. And it's really good to get that visualization experience and put that on your resume because that will absolutely be helpful in getting a data analyst job in the future. All right. So the next three that we're going to be looking at are industry specific analysts. And if you have any domain knowledge in any of these, I highly recommend using these because you can use that domain knowledge to your advantage and help you get a job. So this first one that I'm going to be looking at is a marketing analyst. So let's take a look at these really quick. A marketing analyst is going to do a lot of analysis on marketing data, but they usually aren't using a lot of the same tools like SQL and Tableau and Python. Typically, they're using Google Analytics uh, combined with some you know, CRM or sometimes they use SQL. It just depends. Um, but let's take a look. I'm going to find one uh, that I think is a pretty good representation of what a marketing analyst will look like. All right, so it took me just a second to find this one. Uh, this was a marketing analyst for UNFCU in New York. <clears throat> and basically what it is, is they are looking for someone who has knowledge of data query tools like SQL, data visualization tools like Tableau, and Google Analytics. Uh, again, a lot of times we'll have like Google Analytics on there, maybe uh, Salesforce, something like that. And what they're wanting you to do is collaborate with branding and promotions teams for campaign execution. Uh, contributions include industry and product research, scope definition, audience identification, success measurements, and impact evaluation. I, I think that kind of sums it all up in one sentence. You know, this is all marketing based. Uh, this is not my cup of tea. This is not what I specialize in. I'm in healthcare. But, you know, if you are on the marketing side, this can be a really great job title for you to search for instead of a data analyst. And so I think that this is another really good one, especially if you already have some type of, you know, degree or experience in marketing. All right. So the next one that we're going to be looking at is a financial analyst. So a financial analyst is going to work on the financial side. They typically are going to work within like banks or a financial department within a company. And so if you really have an inclination towards finances, this is a fantastic option for you. That's not my calling. I like the healthcare side of things uh, for the most part. And so, you know, this is not one that I'm going to be looking up. I won't be working at like Chase or anything anytime soon. Um, but there is a few differences here um, from what I have found and what I have researched and seen myself is financial analysts typically don't use as tech heavy as other um, as other analysts as a whole. Some positions and some companies are super tech heavy with their financial analysts, but a lot of them are using things like Salesforce or Microsoft Access as a database um, or SaaS or things like that. Not typically like SQL and Python and all the things that we, you know, a data analyst is going to need. And so let me find a, a job here that I think is a pretty good representation and we'll take a look. 
All right, so I found this one after a bit of scrolling. It isn't perfect, but um, you know, it does have some things that I was trying to hit on. They want someone who has proficiency in Excel and PowerPoint. Um, the one thing I actually wanted to really uh, point out here is they want someone who's proficient in financial analysis, forecasting, and accounting. So if you have an accounting background or you're trying to become a data analyst and you are an accountant or you know an economics degree or a finance degree, this may be a really good option for you because they are specifically looking for people who have that financial and accounting background. And so you will probably stick out against other people who you know want to become a financial analyst who have a completely random degree. And now let's take a look at the very last one and that is gonna be a healthcare analyst. Uh... There we go. So like the previous two that we just looked at, this one is industry specific. So this one is healthcare. So if you have a background in healthcare, this one could be a really good option. A healthcare analyst is going to need to know a lot of the basic data analyst skills like SQL and Excel, but they're also going to need to know the healthcare specific things like how to use an EMR or an EHR, or at least know the data that's in those systems. All right. So I think this one is a pretty good example. This one is at Michelin Martin, uh, some small company. And for the requirements, they're looking for someone who has healthcare industry experience. They want someone who knows EHR and EMR systems or claims data. Uh, they want someone who knows Tableau, Power BI, SQL, and Python, um, and preferably has a master's degree, apparently. Um, so this is a mid-level to probably senior level position, but you kind of get an idea of what they're looking for, right? They have a lot of the data analyst skills, but they also really need somebody who understands the, the healthcare side of things. If you have experience in a specific industry, see if you can use that experience to help you find a job or find an analyst position that actually wants that type of experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.